This is part two of chapter one. I am going to deviate a little bit from how the book teaches because the book gives you lots of formulas and so on, but it doesn't really make sense if you just read it. So I'm just going to explain it my way and the, at the end of this video, we're going to reach the same conclusion that the book reaches, but hopefully you'll understand a bit more about the equations that we are going to find out. Now, remember from the last video, we did this thing where we had the sort of the x, y, z axis, z and x, and we orient our apparatus like straight up and say we get a plus one. Now, this is all there is to know about it. What I mean is when we get a plus one at the positive z axis, we say that the electron, this little red thing over here, we say that it is in the up state. Let's just call it up because it's facing up, right? If we do the opposite, let me see if I can get this. Let's get that out of here. If we measure downwards and we get a plus one when we measure these downwards, we call that a down state, right? Up state, down state. Um, if I measure up and I get a minus one, that means I'm in the down, I'm sorry, if I measure, if I put my device, let me get it here. If I'm measuring, whoa, freaky. If I'm measuring like this and I get a minus one, that means that the, the, the electrons, this spin state, let's not call it spin, let's just say that thing is, it's minus one here, so it must be plus one there. So if we measure it using this guy, we're gonna go plus one. So, and that would be the downward states. So these are the two states that you really care about, right? Uh, equally important, you also have the right and left, and you can imagine that the right and left are gonna be similarly. If we orient the apparatus like this, and we get a plus one, that's a right state. If we orient the status to the other side, um, here, and we get a plus one. Oh, that was horrible. Let me redo that. Pum, pum. All right. We do it like this and we get a plus one. That's a left state. And we're going to write all of these like this. Like this is a left. Uh, this is a right state. And similarly, we, we point it here. Um, we get a plus one. We call that an in state. And we can call it an out state when we point it like imagine it coming out of the screen. But you get the point. Like these are the different sort of states that we have. But Really, you only care about, for now, let's only care about this, this up and down thing, right? Up and down. When I, again, when I point my apparatus in the positive Z axis, I'm saying this over and over again because it's so important. When I point it like this and I get a plus one, I am in the up state. Like that's all there is to know about this electron, right? That is my state. And if I'm pointing downwards and I get a plus one, right? I'm in the downward state, down state. If I'm in up state, I can't be in down state. I can't be in left, I can't be in right. I can't be in in, out. I can only be in the up state. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk a bit about what this thing, the, the thing that I just drew, the up state is. This is called a ket vector, right? It's a, it's a vector. Um, you know how you draw vectors, like like the IJK vectors. It's let's just say for all intents and purposes, it's a vector. You have a ket vector. You also have similarly a bra vector. Bra vector, and they can combine to make a bra ket. Right. And when this thing becomes one, this operation, I'm gonna show you what, what it actually does. Um, one, or you could, it could be zero. Now, the bra vector, the ked vector essentially is like you can stack two things. I mean, let's say a zero, a one. That would be a representation of the ked vector. The representation of a bra vector for um, like you would be it's a row uh, vector 
um, with the complex conjugate. So these are complex numbers. A0 is a complex number. A1 is a complex number. And this is a column vector. That would be my up. And this would be down. So before you can, you can select um, any pair of um, these are called the orthonormal bases because the up and down they are orthogonal. What that essentially means is if you get an up, right, there is zero probability of getting it down because once you're in the up state, you're gonna be in the up state. If you measure the down state, if you try and measure the downwards component, you're still gonna find up. What I mean is once you once you measured C and you got a plus one, you can measure it the other way you're gonna get a minus one. That just means that you're still in the up state. So they're orthogonal in the sense that once you reach one of the states, you can never reach the other state. However, notice that um, UN like right is not orthogonal because if you're in the U state, you can measure the right state and you, you will get some value. But these are used to calculate probabilities, which we will get into. But the most important thing to know is this idea of orthogonality is that like up and down are orthogonal similarly <clears throat> down and up would be orthogonal as well left and right is orthogonal and so on and so on okay now we there is this principle that you can write um a random state Right? Because your state doesn't necessarily have to be up or down. It can be any random state. Let's call it A. It can be written as a superposition of a summation of... Oh man, I just complicated this. It can be written as a summation of your orthonormal basis. Let's say we use the up and down vector as our base. Right? It, okay, let's compare it with IJK. You know how in three-dimensional matrix you have i, j, and k vectors, right? And then i and j are orthogonal in that, you know, if it's i, the i vector is essentially 1, 0, 0, right? The j vector is 0, 1, 0. And the k vector is 0, 0, 1. Similarly, we can say that the up vector is a 1, because that's the upper part and a zero and we can say that the down vector is a zero and a one now if you do the um, yeah if you do this right like up and down the down bra of this would be zero one there I mean the complex conjugate of a real number is itself and then one zero and you would see zero times zero times one plus one times zero, you're gonna get zero. So the math works out. So we can sort of use this as a guideline. I hope the IJK made sense because um, this is not in the book and oh, and it made a lot of sense to me when I could compare that in the real world, we would use IJK as the orthonormal basis but in the quantum mechanical world, we're using the up and down sort of. And it's much simpler. Here you would have three components. You, here you only have two. So it's a bit simpler. Uh, but the analogy uh, is nice to have. It, it makes sense. So with that in mind, a random vector such as A, right? We want to write it as a superposition of our orthonormal basis. What I mean is um, I'm going to take my up vector. I'm going to do a plus. I'm going to do my down vector. Now, these will have some coefficients that, you know, multiplied with, I can get an, another vector. Again, e extremely similar to the IJK example. How, like, if you think of how we write 3i plus 2k plus 1j, what that essentially boils down to is uh, we can write it as like a 3, 2, 1, right? And uh, similarly with the up and down concepts, we're going to have, um, let's just call it like A. I don't know how to write these things. Zero, like a, oh, A1. Okay. So these are some complex numbers that are the coefficients. In our case, 
if we think of writing the up vector a0 is going to be 1 times up a1 is going to be 0 times down so which boils down to being up and you can guess for d this is going to be 0 this is going to be 1 uh, this was just an example but the fact that we can write it as such also means that oh that was a horrible summation we're going to sum over our orthonormal basis and uh, let's call it i this does not mean the in vector it's just like u and d <clears throat> and a of i and we're going to have the i vector and let me just write it here that i is within this set of up and down this is also one of the things that's kind of implied in the book not really explained so i hope this helps you understand so this equation is exactly that equation but just a bit condensed now what we're going to do is um multiply this a with we're going to take the bra and ket of a j and j is again um like a basis vector it's like a up or a down okay let's say it's up or down whatever it is what that makes it is we still have the summation right we still have the a of i but now everything has a j multiplied to it now notice that the j and this product is going to be one when they're equal right because up and up is going to be one when it's different it's going to be zero right so when it's the same it's up when it's um different it's going to be zero so if we write that down we have of j that's all that it comes down to so when j is up right um what's going to happen is um the up and up is going to stay so the aj is going to stay and um the a yeah i'm trying to think of a good way to show this uh, let's just actually use the up vector right we're expanding this thing and we said that the summation um if we set it like au plus uh sorry a u multiplied by the j is up times up plus a down times up or down so i is now down down now this thing becomes zero this thing is a one this thing is a zero so that comes down to a u and u and j are the same so here you can see they're the same so the equation basically boils down to we can write that any vector can be written down as a sum over all the basis vectors which there are two of them of that basis vector and we have that i and a product this defines the state of a quantum mechanical system and we're going to build on top of that this is where the chapter ends and we're going to keep building on top of that uh, but just to show again that this value was actually just um, this guy over here right this guy expanded out to be this guy so that is our basic equations again i is simply up comma down so if we expand the state um, let's expand it just for fun so if we do literally do the expansion of this we're gonna have up okay up the product with a all right summation okay the next thing is down all right down with a right this represents any vector like instead of pointing it straight up we can just point our device anywhere and this equation and is going to tell us um, 
the state of the vector now these guys are the important part because this is going to be constant right this is like a constant in every equation but these guys are the ones that change and these guys are the one that will tell us what the probability is when we do certain actions and that's what's going to be covered in the next chapter i hope this made sense if not stick with it just see some equations i promise it will make sense in the next episode if this did not make sense thanks a lot